Hello everyone, my name is Pacha and welcome to our big animal showcase from the new Grasslands animal pack as well as the showcase of the update 1.12. Thanks to Frontier I was lucky enough to have a little bit of early access to this pack so I could already test everything out, look at all the stuff and now give you an overview of everything that is new in the new DLC as well in the update. And before a little bit of a disclaimer, there might be things that I don't know yet because I haven't seen the patch notes, I haven't seen the full release notes, so if there are things that are in the patch notes that I don't address here, please don't be uh, angry with me, I just don't know them, I only got yeah, the DLC and the update but not no additional notes, so let us start in right in with what the update 1.12 brings to you guys. As we already can see, there is a new type of education here and this new type is the educated tours or the guided tours and we can already see one starting here. Uh, we see our educator and then a group of people following them. Um, and then they go from each of these little points here that I, you can set up along, yeah, along your zoo and then they walk from each of these points to another and look at all the new stuff there. It's really easy, you can find the yeah, points under facilities, then you go into media devices and education, under education you find these tour points here and a little bit of a tip, you have to have at least three to make a full tour. So you can easily set them up, you can set them wherever you want to have your tour to go. You click on one, open your tour messenger, you want to add another tour, select a start, you get this, select points, so you need at least a point in the middle, um, yeah, these three points we need an, an, an start point, a middle point, an end point, and then you ne also need to select which species are in the, yeah, in the, on the point they are visiting, and then your tour guides, you also have to, yeah, I think you also have to select a tour person uh, to actually go to these tours, and then your tour guide will lead your visitors to these points, give them a boost in education and also a little bit of an income because they have to pay for these tours. The next thing we want to talk about is the new bulldozer tool. As you, as you can right see here in the corner we got a new button here, uh, which is also I think labeled bulldozer tool and if you go in you have these, this white cylinder um, that you can also increase and decrease in size and also in height. Um, so if you have maybe stuff built on a mountain for example and then you have a lot of different tabs here um, that you can't sadly make bigger so it's a little scrolling, you have construction and nature, facilities and exhibits, path and extras, paths itself, habitat objects, barriers, rides and tracks and as well water and your highlight hidden barriers. If you click for example only on construction and nature they will, it will only distract everything yeah, that is nature and construction, so from the construction tab. Uh, the same way if I go for facilities, it will delete the facilities. Uh, if I go for path extras, it actually deletes um, stuff like the education points, but also bins, um, yeah, benches and all that kind of jazz. And if you go into your yeah, uh, paths itself, it's pretty easy, it deletes paths. Uh, habitat objects is all things like enrichment, food and such items and barriers as it self explains ex deletes barriers, water deletes water and rights and tracks deletes that. So this is a new bull to the tour, um, kind of have to play around a little bit with it more but from itself it's pretty self explanatory and especially the function that we can mass delete benches and bins will be really helpful. As always, the update also comes with a few new plans. There are actually no plans in the DLC itself, but the update comes with three new plans. There might be that there are more plans in the update. Um, I only found these three. You can find them very easily if you select the grassland biome tag. Then they are listed under that. We get uh, yeah, v always dry variants and fresh variants of these plants. We get the big blue stem in three different sizes, uh, as I said, in yeah, normal variant and the dried out variant. We get the red oat grass in both variants 
and we get the buffalo grass uh, yeah, set and dried out and normal. Sadly there is no pampas grass um, which would have been really lovely for the main wolf or some South American builds. But I have to say after playing around a little bit with these, especially these grasses here and especially yeah, the uh, buffalo grass are really lovely and really great to make um, easy yeah, um, grassland areas and fill out these areas with some more additional grasses. So there, yeah, these are really great additions. Sadly no new tree or bigger plant, only these grasses, but I think for a grassland animal pack update um, these fit very well. There are also a couple new things that um, might not be easy to find in the first place under the, in the construction tab because we are getting the new butterfly house. It's not new, it's the same exhibit building for the fruit beds, but we get a new type of barrier for the butterfly house. We also get some props. We get these walkthrough exhibit netting panels in three different sizes in a yeah, in the sloped size and then as a roof. Um, sadly we can't we can't recolor them so we have to stick with the normal color. We also get uh, yeah, uh, a hanging basket plant that we also will see later in the exhibit itself as well as an additional keychain that you can put on these baskets. Sadly both uh, the keychain is not recolorable so it's only this white metal color but I think it's still it's a very nice and especially small piece that can be really useful for, for our builds. Let us now go over to the uh, Grasslands Animal DLC. Since it's an Animal DLC there are no building pieces but Frontier still gave us some yeah, educational signs so to say for these pieces and especially these butterfly statues of the four, five new butterfly species are really lovely. If you can see it they slowly clap their wings and we get an additional Grasslands Animal sign pole um, that if I if I'm correct, is even thinner than the cable piece we got with the Euro pack. It is recoverable, so um, yeah, we get an even thinner metal piece string that would be one would work wonderful for netting and such. Um, yeah, as I said, we get these five uh, animal statues of the butterflies that still take your wings. We get, of course, our little statue from the new career scenario. This time, it's a lovely little armadillo, and then we get a whole roster of seven new animal signs from the seven new habitat animals and again in their lovely yeah the lovely realistic um, stylization and I really I'm really happy that Frontier is now sticking with this type of and of, of animal signs and that they don't switch it around every pack um, and give us new variations so we can have a consistent animal signage in our zoos I would really love and hope that Frontier will give us um, additional signs for all other animals in the game in this style. Um, but for now we have them for the last, I think, three or four packs. Uh, we ignore the, the message always in the background. We come to that in a moment. But yeah, we get these five statues. We get these seven uh, animal signs, a little statue here. And again, a really thin cable piece, um, animal pole piece. It is, is, is it thinner than the cable? Uh, I think it's thinner than the cable piece. Um, let me check these are the two cable pieces from the Euro pack and yeah it is thinner than the cable piece so we get an even thinner cable variant which is really nice. There might be some more uh, things in the construction um, construction tab. If you find some let me know in the comments down below. Um, I, as I said I don't have the info right now. Let's get to the meat and bones of the Grasslands Animal Pack and we kick things off with the yeah, new exhibit animal or better, should I better say new exhibit animals because Frontier is giving us not one but five different butterfly species that you can also house together in one exhibit making it the first interspecies exhibit. They even get an enrichment bonus from doing so so if you have multiple species in yeah, you only benefit from it. Um, we are getting as I said five species we get the cloudless sulfur, the European peacock, the Menelaus blue morpho, the monarch and the old world swallowtail. So really your standard typical butterflies, no giant species in here, uh, at least for now, maybe in the future. Um, you can have up to 90 of these little insects in here, so quite a lot. And other than that, this building works the same as the Egyptian fruit bed exhibit, with one exception that instead of the mesh fence you got with the fruit bed, uh, you this time get a netting 
outside material because obviously they would escape from a mesh yard wall. Um, so this netting material that you also get as standalone pieces is new to this exhibit. It's like this thin piece of fabric keep keeping them in. Um, this is how it looks without any decoration. You can also deactivate this hanging, these hanging baskets if you make it a null one. Then these baskets uh, get all away. You sad sadly can't get rid of these butterfly houses as well as these bushes. So making it a, a totally uh, empty room is sadly not possible. Would have loved to have that option. Um, but if you want to have more decorations, you can have a, a variety of different options like different feeders, different plants, and Mr. some more plants. And of course, you can also put your own plants in, but keep in mind, they will not land or use these. Um, and I have to have to say, I, I noticed that they are, they are flocking on these little uh, butterfly houses. I don't know what they are called. Uh, they oftentimes fly around a little bit. Uh, they oft also huddle around these bushes. If you have more plants and they all obviously will also use the feeders and these bushes here. But uh, the majority of them will stick to these butterfly houses and occasionally some one of them will fly freely in the room. There is also a cool interaction between the guests and the butterflies. I will put up a picture up now of um, a guest holding a butterfly and also the educators doing an, an education talk will have a butterfly species, the one you selected for the talk will have them on the shoulder. So there is some, uh, yeah, some interaction between uh, your people and your animals, which is always really cool. I was really surprised by the guest interaction. And in general, it, it feels nice. It's a nice uh, little addition to the game. Hopefully something that we can build on in the future, maybe even with more feathery friends, uh, make it seem that, that as we can have multiple species of butterflies uh, in here without any problem which was yeah not possible before and I hope yeah that we also maybe get some more tropical species of butterflies maybe some of these big moths and your yeah, monarch falters uh, or whatever they called in, in English um, really cool really nice the model itself is really great as always um, Frontier is really good at making these really small insect models now uh, really cool so yeah the butterfly house <laughs> our first edition with the new DLC Next in our list, <coughs> next in our list is our lovely nine banded armadillo, and <laughs> I just yeah found them cuddling around together. Um, this is the first of our seven habitat animals, and I think also the smallest one. Um, they are oh they have a baby <laughs> as I just saw. They um yeah about the size. Uh, of the skunk, I would say they can also use the small animal burrow, and as you already saw, they can use the termite mount that before that ca could only be used by the giant ant eater. Um, I put a video up now or an, uh, a recording up now of them using the termite mount. It looks a little bit glitchy. I um, already have the feeling that the armadillo is still a little bit um, gl uh, glitchy and buggy. As I don't know if it's only my preview version of the game, but um, maybe it's it's fixed in the initial release. And here we have the baby, which uh, looks exactly like the adults, only smaller. Um, but yeah, really nice animations, really nice what they did with with the yeah this little coat of arms, this little um, yeah medieval armor, basically this little tank here these plates on the back. It looks really cute it, it, when it when it's huddling around. I haven't seen too many of the new animations of it, but yeah, it's it's really made well done. It's really made well. Um, we have to see, I have still haven't seen the stand-up animation, but oh, we, are, oh God, we have a lot of babies <laughs> I just saw. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> we have a, an army of little babies. Um, uh, interesting fact that these animals get basically identical um, yeah, uh, couplets, twins, um, because there's something with their DNA splitting uh, when pregnant and something like that. I don't know the exact science, but yeah, lovely small animal, um, really cool addition to your American roster and definitely, yeah, a nice and must have in your zoo. Next up is the red-necked wallaby, um, another, <laughs> hello little one, <laughs> our second kangaroo species, kangaroo species in the game and also a, a very a smaller kangaroo species in the game 
Uh, and just as lazy as the red kangaroo that we already have with the Australia pack. Uh, and only the babies are a little bit more active, <laughs> as it seems. Um, in terms of, yeah, of animations and everything. <laughs> uh, in terms of, of, of enrichment and everything. Not that much different from the red kangaroo. Only a little bit smaller. But... Very much, very, very cute. Um, I, I mean, look at these big eyes and the fur shader. I think we don't have to t say anything about the fur. It uh, looks phenomenal. This short hair is something Frontier is really, really good in. But yeah, other than that, not much of a differentiation from the red kangaroo. But I think um, it will be lovely to have these in your zoo for a smaller kangaroo species. Guests can enter the habitat as far as I remember right. So you can make your your well known um, your well known wallaby walk through uh, habitats where the guests just walk them. And they and they are basically they are very calm animals, so it's easy. Well, it's, it's good to make them for them. Um, I would love if they would s not hop around all the time and also la uh, walk on all four on all four legs that they do in real life. Um, for now, they only hop around to uh, yeah, to get from one point to another. But other than that, really cool animal. And and finally another yeah another marsupial, marsupiliani uh, after the wombat. So we are we are slowly expanding our um, Australian roster. On place number three is the caracal, or the Persian lynx, uh, how it's also called. Um, <laughs> or big flopper, as it is known in the internet community. Um, another small cat, a small filly day, um, something we really need in this game, and I hope we will get some more in the future. But um, look at this model. I, I, I don't think I have to say a lot about this. Um, it just looks amazing. I hope you don't escape. Uh, otherwise, other, the other side might be deadly for you. But yeah, um, really a cool animal. There was some uh, controversy and some worrying about the face. As uh, I'm not a huge caracal expert, but um, if we look at the face, I think it is fine. It looks like a small cat, like I would imagine a uh, lynx uh, your relative would uh, look like. And I especially love these eyes that just give so much personality. Um, Really nice. I really also love these twitching of the ears that the caracals are famous for. So the, every now and then they twitch the ears down and also these ear tufts are always in some kind of locomotion. Um, really nice eye of eye to detail here. Uh, really cool. They, the color um, can be a little bit different. There are some brighter colors, there are some darker colors. And oh my god, you are just the cutest thing in the world with the biggest ears in the world uh, pr in proportion to your body. Uh, oh my god, <laughs> you are just cute. <laughs> but yeah, tell me tell me guys in the comments um, if you have a problem with the Caracal's face. Personally, for me, I don't see a problem with it. Um, but as I said, I'm also not that fam I was also not f that familiar with the with these cat species to this day. I know that they existed, but I never really looked them up. So I'm no expert on that. But other than that, a really cool small uh, cat addition to the game. And I hope this means uh, some more in the future. Um, I'm still waiting for some very specific ones. So yeah, we will see what the future brings to us. Up next, we have the striped hyena, our second hyena species after the spotted one from the base game, and uh, our, I think, most controversial animal in this pack. Ever since we saw uh, the first reveal of this animal, um, people have complained about the face and, yeah, how it basically looks in the game. And now that I'm seeing it also in, now that I'm also seeing it in game, I can say that this face, while it doesn't look particularly bad, it looks off. Um, if you compare it to real pictures of hyenas, of striped hyenas, um, they have a more yeah, slender face, a more hyena-like face, and this here reminds me very much of, of that of a puppy of a small dog or something like that. Um, which is a little bit unfortunate and there's also a, a lot of forum posts on the Planet Zoo official forum that demand or that ask Frontier 
for yeah a reskin or um an update to that face to make it more in in line yeah. with the real yeah with the real counterpart of that animal and in fact um yeah brand news brand new news frontier replied to our uh, to our questions if we, if they could take a second look at the f uh, hyena face yesterday and they said they will look into it they will consider maybe updating it we don't know to what degree but we know that frontier is listening to us uh, to us players and said that, that they consider they are changing it. Apart from that, um, the animal still looks amazing, especially the fur and the body itself. Apart from, uh, if, 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 we don't, if we take away the head, the rest of the animal looks phenomenal, especially the hair on the back that can raise if they are stressed or in a fight, these hairs will raise to make them look bi bi bigger. And I think once you guys and I have the new, up the new updated version of this animal, um, I think we will uh, all agree that this will be yeah, one of the coolest animals in the game and even better than the spotted hyena. Um, it is like the Bintu Rong uh, in the Southeast Asia animal pack that we hated and when we first saw it, but after the update they really nailed that animal. So yeah, the striped hyena, our fourth animal in the DLC. Next one is one of my personal favorites. And it is, yeah, the fox on stilts, as it's sometimes uh, called, um, the main wolf of South America. Um, one of the weirdest canines in the world, and I'm so happy that we finally have it, because it's such a unique animal. And you can already see why, because of these very slender, long legs, and this very, yeah, relatively short body, and also... Because of it, of its walking and very slowly and gracial working around, it is really cool. Um, as as the name suggests, fox on stilts. It is closer related to foxes than to actually actual dogs. Um, but it is it is its own um, yeah species order of species, and it's the only member of this species uh, order. So um, really a new animal, a unique animal. Frontier did a fantastic job again on the fur with this mane on the back and especially the, the tail that reminds a little bit of a fox. And especially this walking, this gracious, yeah, slow walking through the high grass is really cool. They have also an, a, a couple of different and cool animations where they scratch uh, their, yeah, scratch themselves with their hind legs or just uh, look friendly around. Um, Really cool. Um, there will be another video up tomorrow with maybe a, a, a main wolf build that I did for the upcoming DLC. So you can have a look at what you can do with the new animals. So I uh, would look out for that on my channel. It was really cool to build for them. And yeah, the main wolf are, I think, one of the coolest addition to this game with this DLC. The only bird that we get with this DLC is the emu. And um, I think many people, especially people um, who bought the Australia pack back then, are finally shouting into the sky, yes, thank you, Frontier, because they gave, finally gave us the emu, the bird that we all expected to be in the Australia pack, but we, get, we got the cassowary instead. Now we have this um, uh, yeah, very gracious, <laughs> very uh, majestic bird um, that actually won a world, that actually w won a war. Uh, if you don't know that, uh, look it up, Emu War, really fun story. Um, I think this is one of the most, <laughs> I don't know if you like, hear this, but this booming noise that they uh, make, very iconic. And uh, just as I was about to say, that is one of the most iconic um, animals of Australia, um, one of the few ostrich-like species in the world and yeah it is very unique with this with this blue neck here um that i think not all emus have um i know they can have it um but i would have loved to have also variant that has not not this very blue neck and more plumage uh, up to the throat because uh, they can be pretty still pretty he uh, heavenly uh, feathered up the neck but still um, really a unique but really an ancient bird with these teeny tiny wings here um, that they have in real life. And yeah, it looks really more, it looks even more ancient than some of the other ostrich-like birds. And yeah, really cool, really another animal for our Australian roster, which is always nice. 
and now we only need the Manian Devil and the Kiwi, and we are pretty much happy with Australia. Um, of course, there are other animals, but it is nice to have them finally in the game. Uh, yeah, really cool. Really love to see them. The final animal on our list is the one most people, I think, didn't expect it, and it is the Blue Wildebeest. Um, we the, the, yeah, we already got another species of wildebeest in the game, which was the black wildebeest. We got that with the base game. Now we have yeah, its cousin, basically the blue wildebeest, which is also I think the one that most people are familiar with, if not um, yeah, because of the Lion King movie where these play, where these animals play a very critical role to the story, a very sad role. But I have to say the model is uh, yeah amazing. Uh, this neck beard and this t uh, tuft of hair, this mane on the on the back, really looks amazing. And the animal itself has, I think, so much personality. If you already look at the eye, uh, which yeah speaks just therefore that these animals are yeah, have emotions that they are a big family, so to say, in my eyes, that they are a big family. And especially if they then run around together, it, it looks really cool. Um, of course, there could have been another, a, a different animal in this in this DLC, a different type of ungulate or anti, uh, or anti, maybe an antelope of some kind. But uh, I have to say, for what it's worth, these animals really look great. And yeah, I'm happy to have them. Um, will I ever use them? Most likely not that much, other if I'm starting an African zoo. But then I think I will try to give them the justice they deserve. So, that was our not short and not small overview of everything new with the new Animal Grasslands DLC and the update 1.12 coming to you guys tomorrow on the 13th of December. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, yeah you learn something if you want to buy this DLC or not if you have more questions or if you want to know something uh, let me know let me know down in the comments um, also if you can also let me know what animal you are most excited for what animation or what piece you're most excited for if there is one and other than I hope you enjoyed it as I said there will be another video out tomorrow when the pack releases to the public and I see you then and I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe consider giving it a like if you really, yeah, if you want to really want to support me. And then I would say, have a great time, stay safe, and bye bye.